Thank you. Thanks everybody for being here tonight. It is great to see people not wearing masks as long as we're like this. I've seen more masks than I care to see, but uh, it's great to see full faces and so many supporters of Purple Eagles Athletics with us tonight. Um, we've had people send questions in uh, since we started planning this, so we're going to get through those and I'm going to talk with each of the coaches uh, about that. And then as Jacqueline said, if you have questions, just throw them in the chat box there and we'll, we'll take them as much as we can in the time we have tonight. We're going to just uh, start pretty generally uh, with and get an update from each coach on the season, how it's going so far. Uh, we'll start uh, ladies first, of course, always. So Jada, I'm going to turn it over to you. Tell me about how your season's been uh, thus far and, and what you're looking forward to. First of all, I want to say good evening, everybody, and, and thank you for coming out and, and checking us out tonight and hearing what we have to say. Um, it's definitely been a trying you know, time for us. It's been very interesting because we thought we were going to be starting our season uh, at the end of November. And um, since that time, we've been on a few pauses and we've played four games. So uh, right now we're looking at um, a situation where we're just, we're just praying that we can get the rest of our season in. Um, you know, there have been some bright moments, although we've only had four games, we've had, you know, the emergence of Angel Parker as one of the best players we think, you know, in the conference, um, along with Olivia Mason and, you know, Maddie Yell, who have done some tremendous things, you know, for us. Uh, so we're not discouraged by the amount of games that, that we've played because we've seen some good things. Um, we've definitely seen, you know, the fire, the passion, the grit, the heart, um, you know, just they're leaving it all out there. And, and it's definitely not an easy situation. If you can imagine just uh, if when we were kids, we played red light, green light, right? Everybody played that game, I think. And that's what it's been for us. It's been like, okay, you know, green light, you go. And then it's like red light and then you stop then you get to go again and then you stop. So that's kind of been what we've been dealing with. But what I will say about our young team is that they've been very resilient and they haven't, you know, complained. They just, you know, we go through the pause situations. We meet on Zoom and, and you know, play games with them. You know, we watch, uh, you know, documentaries and things like that. And then once we get back out on the court, you know, they're ready to give it everything that they have. So for us, um, definitely not the sample size that we wanted to to have at this point you know february 1st but i think that you know for us to come i, I think you know we get out of this situation and, and hope to be able to play sienna next week and then roll off a bunch of games going into the mac tournament that's Thank great you. thanks jada so next week sienna is that, what what is the date of that green light if you will uh, green light actually starts with practice on Saturday, the Perfect. 6th. Okay. And Great. then game wise, we will be at Siena on uh, the 10th, and that's next Wednesday. Great. And we're going to turn it over to, as, uh, well, is Greg there? Greg looks like he may have stepped away for a second. That's fine. So we'll jump to uh, Coach Lammers. Jason, tell me about the team and, and the same kind of setup. Where are you with the season, and how's it going so far? Yeah, well, thank you for everybody being here. As, as Jada said, it's it's great to see everybody. And as you said, Tom, great to see everybody without a mask too. So uh, thank you. So our team is in a uh, state of flux. And I thought Coach Pierce said it best, red light, green light. Uh, we've practiced five times as a team together since the start of the season. So we've we've not had much time together. We have had one student athlete's been in quarantine for 28 straight days. We have another athlete that's coming up on close to 50 days of quarantine. Uh, so because of New York and the county regulations and the state regulations, we, we've had a heck of a time uh, with COVID. So Chad Veltri last year was the leading freshman goalie in the country with his numbers. He's only played five of our games because of uh, some COVID related activities and then injuries related to COVID. So the opportunity that we have is now we're kind of coming out of, of our red light and getting ready for, for green light. Uh, we, we're healthy or getting healthier now. Uh, we, because of the administration and their commitment to help us play, we have gotten in our 13 games that are necessary to be eligible for the NCAA tournament. So we're working towards that as a staff. We haven't spent much time together either because of the regulations and protocols around COVID. So now we get to all be together. And uh, the main highlight that we've had this season is we beat the number seven team in the country with all those obstacles earlier this year. We beat, uh, we beat Clarkson. So 
it's uh, it's it's really an exciting year. We're we're still really pumped about our team and hopeful our timing is right. This weekend, Friday and Saturday, we are scheduled to play the team south of the bridge. Very good. I think I know who that is. They wear blue and gold, right? They do. All right. The the uh, college blue and gold team, not the professional blue and gold team. Uh, Greg Paulus, so let's turn it over to you. Tell me a little bit about uh, an update on this year's season thus far, and and uh, how we're doing, and and what what you're seeing so far. Yeah, thanks, Tom. And uh, sorry, I had to step away there um, just for just for a quick minute. But uh, thrilled to be with you tonight. And uh, in case anybody on the call has um, not had a chance to meet our staff, um, we'll give uh, kind of in each each one of uh, our, our staff members an opportunity to uh, share a little bit of information about where we are and, and um, uh, where we're going. And, uh, you know, fortunately for us, we're, we're grateful for the opportunity to have a little bit bigger sample size, um, certainly dealing with challenges like like all of us. And, um, you know, I'll throw it to our uh, director of basketball operations, Austin Kelly, to uh, talk a little bit about uh, some of the different protocols and challenges and, and uh, how we're managing some of those. Thanks, Greg. Um, for those who I haven't had a chance to meet yet, Austin Kelly, first year here with Coach Paulus up in Niagara. Um, been great so far, as Coach mentioned. We've been lucky to get a few games in here. Um, definitely unique year, obviously. Some of the bigger the bigger things we've been trying to do with our guys um, with the COVID stuff is just helping them with their mental health, you know, doing everything we can while we're together and apart, you know, for however long that may be, just to make sure that, you know, they're supported, trying to make it as, as fun as possible. We've had quite a few road games, which have had their own challenges. Um, different counties and different states have different rules. So I think we've had five or six road trips with five or six different set of rules that we've kind of had to accommodate with, you know, with meals and rooming and all sorts of things with that. Um, but like I said, we're try trying to do the best we can. I was, you know, we were coming home from Manhattan, you know, after a long weekend and, you know, the, the guys wanted to watch a little bit of football on the bus. So we found a way to get them some football on the bus. Uh, we introduced uh, coach Devitt to the shout song. So that was enjoyable for everybody. Um, but yeah, you know, obviously it's been been unique year, you know, fortunate that we've been able to get our games in, but that's the main thing that we're trying to do is just make sure our guys are, you know, know that they're supported, anything we can do to help and we're trying to do the best we can with that. No, th thanks AK and, and uh, he's been a terrific addition for us. Um, you know, we worked together at George Washington uh, for a year. He's, he's uh, done, done a terrific job with building relationships with our team. And uh, in, in speaking about our team, uh, we'll have uh, Brian Smothers kind of share a little bit about uh, our journey to this point. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Uh, good to see you all again. Um, you know, I think uh, one way we've tried to uh, sum this up for our guys is embracing sudden change, right? You know, and and we've had it in, in several ways. You know, we we've had to embrace it with changing in our roster. You know, a kid like Jordan Centron who we're expecting to have to sit out a year. And, you know, after the third game, he's, he's now eligible to play. And we have to figure out how he uh, mixes with the rest of the team and how we can use his abilities um, the best. And, and so, you know, at this point in the season, you know, we've tried to find ways to use him and, and, and playing in different styles. And so that's been something that's actually been really good for us. But again, not something that we um, – expected coming into the season you know we've had to embrace the sudden change with some injuries and things like that that have come up I think you know for the past couple of weeks we've only had maybe eight or nine scholarship players available and so you know myself coach Irvin coach coach uh, Austin Kelly we've we've gotten a lot of reps in on the court you know we've gotten a lot of scout team reps I probably played more basketball this season than I've had since I was a player. And so it's been really good from a cardio and conditioning standpoint, but there are definitely a lot of sore nights going home. So, but we have to do what we have to do. And that's a part of us embracing that as well. And, you know, just with the schedule as well, I think, you know, we've, you know, maybe three of the last four weeks, we have had a change in our schedule teams. We were planning to play. Uh, we're playing a different team on Sunday or Monday of that week. So for us as a staff, just adapting on the fly there, embracing that change and getting our guys as prepared as possible uh, for, for those challenges. Uh, but right now, seven and nine on the season, six and eight in conference play, you know, it, it's kind of hard to reflect on 
things that have happened and you know it, you know we can't look too far ahead because you don't know when things may change but really pr proud of our guys and how they fought together how we've come together as a team and you know right now things were a little inconsistent but we we feel it coming and so we're going to attack this next couple of weeks of the season we'll get some guys healthy and we just look forward to uh putting it all out there no thanks thanks brian we're we've uh Really proud of the guys for uh, just embracing it. And, uh, you know, there's been some heck of a team accomplishments and individual ones. One of the ones, uh, you know, from a team standpoint is uh, we've we've accomplished uh, winning more road games than we did all of last season already up to this point. Uh, four and two at home uh, coming off our best performance of the season um, this past weekend, beating Monmouth. Um, so for us, a lot of, lot of uh, we're, we're trying to build it. And, and as we, uh, continue to get healthy which hopefully we will be sooner rather than later um but um i'll tell you what i if you guys have ever heard trash talking before you guys should come to our practice because these these guys uh they they talk a lot of trash after they score on on our players and and uh, it's a lot of fun to watch them uh teach and coach those guys while in the action um, to talk a little bit about uh some of the specifics of, of the highlights uh not team oriented but more specific individual uh we'll throw uh, coach devitt here Thank you, Coach Paulus, and uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us tonight. Um, I will be the first one to say that Brian and Brett are all MAC-level players, even in their elderly age of, I think Brett's like 29 and, and Brian's uh, 32, right? Right, B? Um, I like to claim I'm probably the least athletic out of them all, but I do call the best plays for the scout team, so I put them in great position to score. So I do – I'm owed some credit. Uh, but but I try to make them look good. Uh, and as far as the shout song, that was uh, that was interesting. And uh, it was it was an experience. I'll say that much. Um, but but talking about our team and, and our growth and, and some individual players, uh, as you guys probably saw this this afternoon, the Mac released uh, uh, Kobe Nawanda, who, who became a, a player of the week uh, for us after a great performance, back to back games of 22.5 points per game. Uh, as you can see, you know, it was a, actually the week prior, he reached his 1,000-point plateau against Quinnipiac. So we honored him uh, prior to the first game against Monmouth. So I think that propelled him to a great weekend. Uh, so Kobe's been playing extremely well. Um, and then Marcus Hammond, who's also a player of the week honoree, when we swept Fairfield earlier in the, in the conference season. Um, so those two guys are top five in the league in scoring. And both of them have a chance to be uh, recognized as all league players. Once you once you're a player of the week, you kind of get thrown into that conversation of first team, second team, third team uh, mentioned for the league. So those two guys are having great years. Um, our player development obviously is, is crucial with both of them. Um, and, and our offense, you know, we, we take care of the basketball. Uh, we're top 10 in the country in turnover percentage. So uh, that's pretty, pretty outstanding, it, you know ranking everybody in the country we take care of the ball number one in the max so we don't ever turn it over so we get shots on goal so guys are able to score more points and have uh better careers in our our offensive system because the way we have ball toughness we take care of the ball we execute in the half court um and so another guy that we've actually really relied upon that that is injured right now that hopefully could be back within the next two weeks is justin roberts uh senior for us um he, he said he's had a great a uh, year and a half career so far here. Um, and he's one of the most efficient players in the Mac. Uh, so hopefully we can get him back in the lineup in the next couple of weeks here. And that's really going to help us and, and be advantageous for us. Um, and then speaking about our defense, you know, go, going into the Monmouth series, uh, we were number one in the league in, in scoring defense. Uh, Monmouth is a faster playing team. Uh, so they average they're, they're number one in the league in points per game. Uh, so it was a great challenge for our defense, uh, but we held them to 74 points, which is five points uh, lower than their season, season average of 79 in game two. Uh, so that was that was a good uh, building block for our defense, and we'll look to continue to build upon that. But uh, uh, as far as that goes, um, we're always continuing to grow and uh, grow our guys in the film room and as well as the court and continue to get better. Thanks, Kevin. And, and lastly, I uh, just want to turn it over to uh, to Brett here to give you a little bit of a a, a scope on the academics and also what, what may lie ahead here over the next month. Thanks, GP. Uh, good evening, everyone. I know a lot of familiar faces on here. We're on, on a call in the fall 
uh, where we highlighted our academic success. And that's something that continues to, uh, to be a point of emphasis in our program and something we, we take a lot of pride in. Uh, and our student athletes have continued to raise the bar in that area. Uh, you know, we're happy to say that, that our guys set a program record in the fall semester uh, with a 3.45 team GPA. Uh, we had 13 of our 14 student athletes uh, with a 3.0 or higher, and all 14 of our student athletes are still on, on track for graduation uh, with a couple of those individuals uh, pursuing master's degrees. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's a tribute to our guys, uh, you know, their, their, their toughness and discipline and focus uh, in the classroom through, through these unprecedented times. Uh, you know, a couple of those weeks through the semester were, were spent in a hotel in isolation and quarantine. You know, there are a few individuals that spent more than two weeks. And I know, you know, Coach Pierce and Coach Lammers, you know, you guys know, know about that all too well. Um, but, you know, we're, we're just proud of our guys for, for their ability to adapt and adjust to, to an ever-changing climate right now. Um, from a scheduling standpoint, you know, we're, we're always on call. That's how it's, that's how it's felt. Um, it's like every Sunday you expect a, a text from Coach Paulus of, hey, we're not playing Team A, we're now playing Team B. And we all kind of jump in, and, and I think our staff has, has done a, a really good job of, you know, just like our guys, you know, adjusting on the fly. You know, you're supposed to play Manhattan. Well, now they're shut down, so we're going to Quinnipiac. Or we're supposed to play Quinnipiac, but now we're going to play Marist in three days. And that's, you know, everybody is, is in that right now. And I, I think our, our staff and our players have done a great job of, of just adjusting to that and, and taking what's given to us. Um, you know, looking at our schedule moving forward, as of now, we have four games remaining on our schedule. Uh, we'll host Siena on uh, Friday and Saturday, February 12th and 13th. Uh, we'll also host Canisius uh, on Thursday and Friday, which is March 4th and March 5th. Uh, we'll then prepare to go to the MAC tournament uh, Tuesday through Saturday, March 9th and 13th. Uh, that is still set to take place in Atlantic City. Um, you know, there, there's an opportunity. We could add a couple games moving forward. Um, you know, if some of you guys that have followed our schedule, you may see Iona is no longer on our schedule. Uh, I think they're set to return on February 10th and they've got a lot of games, you know, they've been on pause since their last game is December 23rd. Uh, so they've got a lot of conference games to try to, to squeeze in in a short period of time. So Iona is no longer on our schedule, but who knows, they could have a couple teams they're supposed to play that are shut down and we may get a call that, that we're going to Iona, you know, February 19th, 20th, or, at the end of February. So um, we're remaining, remaining ready to go and uh, we'll take what's thrown our way. Cool. Thanks, Brett. So just wanted to kind of give a little brief overview of uh, kind of how things have gone the last few months. And, and uh, we're just grateful for the leadership that we have with uh, Father Marr and, and Simon and uh, their teams, because uh, they've, they've really helped us and tried to uh, put our teams in as good a position as they can. And um, we're just so appreciative of that. So um, Tom, we'll turn that back over to you, but uh, appreciate you giving us a few minutes to, to share a little bit about our program. Sure, Greg. Thank you. Uh, we're not done with you, so don't go too far because we'll, we'll have some more questions for you. Uh, sure. and thank you for mentioning Simon Gray. We do have Simon on here tonight, so we have questions to get to him. Uh, it's not the, it's not one of the sports we're talking about, but if we need him, need him to pinch hit for somebody, we'll call him in to answer any questions we might have that might be uh, of a larger picture than, than just baseball or basketball and hockey. Uh, Jada, I'm back to you real quick, and I know you talked a little bit about it, uh, and I'm going to give you a chance to just introduce. I know you have a couple coaches on here too, just introduce them. But but you uh, and you mentioned Angel, but any other highlights from the season? I know you haven't had been able to build momentum in the season yet, but but other highlight things that we should know about as as you start to get ready to get going again. So Angel was she was big four player of the week the first weekend that we were able to play. Uh, against Iona and we wound up splitting that series uh, with them. She had two monster games and uh, so got, you know, recognition with the big four and also uh, with her sports is a, it's a website that follows a lot of women's basketball uh, because of the points that she scored rebound. She was one short of a triple double. Um, she was one assist short. So I, I'm going to, you know, take the blame for that. And, and she had somebody late in the game, but we were up by double digits and I had her, you know, pull it out, but she could have had that, that triple double. So that's on me, but she's going to have more opportunities to do that. Um, Allie Har had a breakout game as well. She had some career highs, 
She had some big three pointers against Marist when we took them to overtime. Uh, and Marist is one of the top teams in the country. So competing with, uh, in our league rather, but competing with them, you know, was a high for us knowing that if we stick to doing what we do, the, the style of play that we like to play and the pressure defense, that we can compete with anyone. Um, and over the weekend, last weekend, before we got shut down, uh, Sydney Falcon had a career high, you know, with 14 points coming off the bench for us. Uh, and she did a really nice job too. So I think for us, you're gonna see a lot of firsts with people because we have a group of young women that were coming off the bench last year for us. So now they're in elevated roles. And so they're going to be able to show a lot more of what they can do and credit to our staff with the player development piece and you know the time, the limited time that we had with them, but they've been able to develop them and have them ready, you know, for these games. So you're going to see a lot of career highs. You're going to see a lot of, you know, interesting stats as we go along the way. Um, and leading to my staff, good segue with the player development piece that they've done. We actually promoted uh, Lester Harbin and Brianna Chambers to associate head coaches. So I want to, you know, congratulate them again on on you know that promotion that we were able to get them because they've done a lot you know, as far as uh, helping our program grow and get better every year that they've been here. Uh, Coach Les, as we like to call him, is in charge of our defense. And right now we're in some statistical categories defensively uh, because of the hard work he's put in. We're putting the system in and deep on defense that we have. And uh, Coach Brianna Chambers with our offense, uh, all I hear from other coaches is they don't like the way we run our ball screen motion because we do a lot more than other teams do, causing problems with the screens that we set and the misdirection and and all that good stuff. But those who were promoted to associate head coaches, which we're very excited for them uh, with that. And we added Kayla DeCriscio, who came back to us uh, from, you know, from a couple of years ago, she was our director of operations and now being an assistant coach and our shooting coach in particular. Uh, so our percentages have been up, you know, in these last four, the four games that we've been able to play. Uh, we are one of the better teams from a field goal percentage standpoint you know, in the conference, which is really nice to see, you know, for us. And hopefully we can continue that moving forward with all of our shooting, as we like to call it, um, with a C, because we want to be consistent with it. And then last but not least, we have Carter Kaplan, who joined our staff in the fall as well, uh, coming from Drexel University. Uh, and they've got a great women's program down there. Um, so we're happy to have him join our staff and, and bring some of what he's learned, you know, under the coaches there to be our director of operations and kind of handle the behind the scenes, you know, work kind of like what Austin's doing for the men's team and Carter's chomping at the bit to go on the road. We've had four home games and he's really excited about getting us on the road to kind of see, you know, what everything's going to be about. I'm, I'm sure Austin's probably like, don't be in a hurry for it, but uh, we would like to get that experience under our belts because we know the MAC tournament is not going to be held at the Gallagher Center. So we, uh, you know, we hope to be able to get out there next week and play at Siena. But uh, my staff, you know, they've done a lot. They've gone above and beyond, um, especially all the time that we've spent, you know, on Zooms and, you know, and things like that. They've really put a lot of time into making sure that the experience for our young women are a good experience for them and that they have everything that they need. You know, Carter's been getting food, you know, been able to get food ordered for them and things like that. Uh, so I just can't thank them enough for everything that they've done during this time and what they're going to continue to do moving forward. So that is our staff that we have. Uh, thanks, Jada. And Jason Lammers, we're going to go to you, give you a chance. I know your coaches aren't on here, but um, just to uh, just give us a highlight of, of who's helping you out this season. And then uh, you mentioned the Clarkson win, uh, but any other key pieces that you think have, have really come to the forefront for your squad on the ice this year? Yeah, so thank you, Tom. Our, our staff, uh, Philip Rhodes, is our director of operations. He also has inherited uh, running the rink here at Dwyer Arena. So he's he's doing two jobs at one time and does a phenomenal job at that. Uh, we hired John Lidget this summer. John's a Colgate graduate and comes to us from Des Moines. He was in the USHL, which is the preeminent uh, junior league before you come to college. So he did, he's been doing a great job and, and getting acquainted uh, with uh, the area and, and uh, a young guy, 27 years old, really, really excited and uh, really loves the game. So, and then we also hired Mark Phelan. Uh, he comes to us from University of Alaska Anchorage. He drove from Anchorage to Buffalo here in October, I guess it was, or yeah, October. So he, we're excited to have him. We come from the same family tree of coaches and 
Uh, he does a great job with recruiting and, and he'll now be our lead guy in recruiting and not only as an assistant coach, but as an associate head coach. So we're excited to have all three of those folks on staff. And, and uh, if you haven't been in Dwyer Arena lately, I can't wait till you get back. Obviously, you haven't been in Dwyer Arena lately, but there's been a lot of good things happening thanks to the leadership on campus and uh, specifically Simon with what's going on in the premium club and the signage now that we have in the rink. And, and we continue to work to make Dwyer Arena the hardest arena in the country to play in. So we're excited about that. Uh, other other updates that we have, Tom, we have seven games left. Our, our league uh, has done an okay job. I don't think they've done as good a job as the MAC and how they're adjusting schedules and things like that. So we were supposed to have 11 games this month. We now have seven. So we have that to look forward to. This, this run of games will be the most games that we've had the most guys available to play. So we're excited about that and the continuity that will come with that. Uh, we have high expectations for this group and just how selfless they've been through this through this process and and uh, the choices that they have to make they, they've been super competitive in in uh, making those choices and on the ice I think their attitude has been outstanding how they've carried themselves around campus and red light green light I don't know how many people have had COVID tested or have gone and got the rapid test or the um PCR test, but it's like taking a math test that you know you didn't study for and you're just waiting for the results to come back. So it's a it's a real mental challenge to the guys and they've done a great job with their attitude surrounding that. We push our guys about leadership. You know, what outcome do we want? What event happened? Well, it's our R, right? And it's our response. So we've been really focusing on the response and, and working the responses uh, to the best that we can uh, with what the hand we've been dealt. And then finally, Tom, looking forward to our, our guys just getting better today than they were yesterday. And it's it's that simple in our program. And up until this time, they've done a great job. So excited to see the guys do that. It was exciting to see the guys on the ice for the first time in 21 days uh, today. And uh, so we're we're getting excited and looking forward to the challenge of, of the rest of the year. Perfect. Thanks, Jason. That's a, that's a great, great update. I'm going to head it back over to Greg Polish now. He's got his hands full again. Uh, Craig, a uh, couple questions here. Tell me a little bit about uh, somebody wants to know about Jordan Cintron's play during this period, during the stretch. You know what you've seen, and will Tuba will Tuba be back? Uh, will Tuba yeah, be back? Yeah, thanks for the question. There, um, you know, Jordan is uh, someone that uh, you know, as Brian mentioned, um, you know, he was he was going to sit out this year, and then with the NCAA rule uh, changing, uh, he's able to play with immediate eligibility. Uh, this year, and then he'll have one more year, uh, which we're very excited about. And uh, he's coming off a career high, uh, 22 points in 21 minutes. And, uh, you know, one thing that, that we really enjoy about him is just his ability to give energy. Uh, the enthusiasm is contagious, his toughness, um, the things that he does on the team is uh, just really rubbed off and, and really made us better. And uh, so we're, we're pleased at his progress and development over the, uh, throughout the course of the season. Uh, and it was highlighted uh, last weekend um, there with his performance. And then uh, Tuba is a guy that uh, he, he's been out an extended period of time. Uh, we are evaluating uh, him along with a couple of those other guys that are a little bit banged up right now. Um, and, uh, you know, depending on the guy, it, it could be a day-to-day -day evaluation or a week-to-week. -week. So um, we're hoping having this bye week um, and then, you know, a little bit of time here in February that we'll be able to have a great feel for, not only Tuba, but some of the other guys that uh, have missed a good portion of the season uh, with some injuries. That's great. Thank, thanks, Craig, uh, very much. And just a note from uh, Bob Churchwell, uh, commending all the coaches, uh, impressed with the work that's going on through all of this. So thanks for that note, Bob, and congratulations to the coaches for that. Now, we've talked about all of this a little bit, uh, but I'm going to let each coach talk specifically about the ever-changing environment, what kind of challenge that brings to your team. And you've talked a little bit about it with the other things, but, um, you know, I've talked with Simon Gray about it. It's almost like, you know, when you're a kid and you're trying to find another team to play against, no matter what the sport you call them, hey, can you guys play Saturday? All right, we'll come Saturday. You have nets? Okay. Or, you know, baseball. We got bats. You guys have balls and helmets? Okay. You know, so it's, it's almost that kind of setup. Uh, Jada, tell me about the challenges that you never would have thought about 15 years ago like this when you were you know, getting into coaching or whatever that 
that that you're looking at and making decisions on and acting on every single day now. Uh, what, what is that? What are those challenges? And, and um, what do you think your team's learning from that? I think that um, I think it might have been Jason that said, you know, about the testing and how that impacts, you know, our our young women every time. You know, we're, we're getting tested and you're waiting. You're hanging on every test. And that's definitely something that you never thought, you know, usually somebody sprains an ankle, they go see the orthopedic, you know, or they, they tear an ACL or an Achilles, you kind of know what to expect. Um, but with this COVID, it's, it's every day, it's like, it's like a new day, it could be a, a different challenge. And, you know, for us, a lot is on the testing. And, you know, unfortunately for us, we, we haven't had a lot of luck <laughs> with that. So we're hoping that our luck is now shifting towards this, you know, latter part of the season going into the tournament, but just from a mental, you know, mental health standpoint. And, and I think, you know, Austin mentioned something about it with the men's team, you know, we've had our mental health counselor, you know, speaking with our players, you know, consistently um, and, and just checking in because, you know, you can't really discount that. It's one of those things where, you know, you really want to almost check in with them every day, even though, you know, you don't want to seem too overbearing or, or anything like that, but you've got to find out where they're at because it changes daily with them, you know, and to their credit, we did pretty well in the classroom considering, you know, the time that, you know, we've had that we haven't had the, the chance to play and all the testing that's gone on and things not going our way, you know, they were still able to handle stuff in the classroom. So I think it's one of those things where, you know, you just wake up every day and, and you kind of pray that there's nothing disastrous Thankfully for the young women that have had COVID, we have not had anyone have to go to the hospital. We haven't, you know, we haven't had anything extreme. So there are people that are in worse off situations and there've been programs that have canceled the rest of their seasons. And, you know, also to the credit of our young women, they still wanna play. That was one of the first things that they asked when we got on the call, you know, last week about the latest shutdown was, okay, do we get these games back and when can we play again? So. I thought that was a very good, you know, attitude that they had. And I think overall they've, they've displayed a lot of courage, you know, during these times. So 15 years ago, you're not even thinking about a, a pandemic. You're not thinking about, you know, um, you know, testing, you know, and protocols and just everyday life of wearing this mask every day and in practice and your hand sanitizing every five seconds, you know, all of that stuff. It's just been really, you know, really, really interesting and, and challenging, but, you know, all of us coaches, I think we've adapted just like our players have adapted and we've asked them to, we've adapted as well. It's hard because you want to sometimes give a hug when you, you know that they're struggling and, and to give them encouragement because that's what you're used to doing. And obviously the protocols say that we quote unquote shouldn't be doing that, you know, um, but I'll be honest, sometimes I've had to, you know, you had to do it just because you knew that they needed that. They're not seeing their parents as often. Uh, because we're not allowed to have, you know, anybody come to the games. And that's usually an outlet for them to see their parents uh, at games and stuff. So, you know, I think all of us coaches, my staff has been tremendous with just, you know, shifting gears and, hey, okay, we're in or, okay, we're coming out. This is what we should be doing and offering up great suggestions. And, you know, I'm thankful to have such a great group of people, you know, around me because we're only as, we only go as far as the people that are around us. And, and I think, you know, just like Coach Paulus's staff, and Coach Lammers, they've got great people around them, and, and that makes the experience that much better, you know, for our young women. Um, and I think there was a second part to the question, Tom, that I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank. No, I think that, I think that kind of covers <laughs> it. Just, it's, it's really just the, it's, it's what you, everybody, uh, we all have faced in the last year yeah. now, um, and, and how that's changed all of our lives. But, but I don't think people can fully understand what it means to a team who is going through that and they, you know, it, the seasons are tough enough, and I'll turn it over to, to Jason Lammers now, but the seasons are tough enough, but talk a little bit about, Jason, you know, the things you've had to deal with, the, the differences, you know, taking a test you haven't studied for and not know the result. And, 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 and the, as, as Jada said, you know, somebody goes and gets tested for an ankle sprain, that doesn't mean your whole team's going to shut down because that one player has an ankle sprain, right? You, you move on uh, beyond that, but, but talk about the domino effect uh, that it can have, Jason, on your team if somebody tests positive, has to quarantine, and, and how that really – and how you've managed that with your team, your team, your staff, and, 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 and how your guys have kind of come through that a little bit. Yeah, it's uh, – so the, 
The best way I can describe it with with the county protocols and the state protocols, we had to start the year in pods of practice, right? So we weren't allowed to have everybody on the ice together at the same time. So if you can imagine, we had players, they played for Niagara hockey. They did not meet until November 5th. So they were here for two months more and had not met because of the way we were supposed to practice and, and the pods and, and we did a good job. The whole campus did a great job, especially through the through the fall there. So the, the connection, Tom, and trying to, one of the things that our secret sauce here in, in hockey is the team builders that we do and the connection that we create and the, uh, the love that we create that we're gonna serve the guy to the left and the guy to the right and we're gonna put we over me. And uh, that's really hard to create over Zoom. And so, we, we found ways to do that. We, we've, uh, we've done some role playing over Zoom to try and uh, loosen everybody up and get them connected. Uh, we had some blind dates. We came up with some questions and, and uh, had the guys, you know, blind date each other. One of the questions was, what kind of ice cream do you like? One of the questions was, What's, what scares you the most? So there were very trite questions and there were, there were some deeper questions that we were really hopeful that could create connection uh, between the st student athletes. Uh, there's a there's a show right now, I keep coming across it on Netflix, a movie called Siege at Jadotville. And if you haven't watched that, it's a great movie. And uh, the thing that I remember most, and I would equate this time to this scene in the movie, at what po one point, the, the, Irish, uh, the Irish lieutenant, I think he was, he goes in and he's got all these leadership books on his shelf, right? All these books that he's read and he goes in and he just takes his hand and he wipes the whole shelf, all the books, because you can read all you want about leadership. Uh, there's no leadership right now for what this is, right? There's no book. So every day to Jada's point, there's something that, that you're making a decision on that, that you never thought you would have to make a decision on. So it's, uh, I've actually kind of, I'm one of those guys that embraces this and I enjoy the challenge of it. And to me, it's a little bit of a game. I told Simon today, it's getting a little old. The game's getting a little old now that my, my pieces are getting a little weathered and the game board's getting a little beat up because the game's getting old. So uh, I'm hopeful this all goes away, but but we're, we're learning and growing through it. We've had a chance to really find out about some of our players. Uh, we've have, have a couple great relationships that have been built just because you, you have to take care of these guys when they're in quarantine and by themselves in the hotel. So you end up talking to them a lot about uh, things that you never thought you'd talk to them about. Thanks, Coach. Uh, cookie dough, chocolate chip cookie dough is my favorite ice cream. Thank you. I wanted to know that. Um, I'll mark that down, Tom. Thank you. Yeah. And that's similar to the Mike Tyson line when somebody said they thought they had a strategy to beat him, and he said, Everybody has a strategy until you get punched in the face, right? Amen. So that's, Amen. Uh, that's uh, uh, Coach Paulus, what, uh, tell me about your guys and, and what do you think they're, they're learning out of all this? Uh, you know, athletics certainly builds character, can help reveal character in that. But, but what else are they getting out of this season uh, from a learning experience? Well, I, I think that uh, this is certainly going to be a year that uh, is unforgettable for, for a lot of different reasons. And, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to teach leadership. We're trying to teach development. We're trying to teach the game and teamwork. And uh, every, every day is something different. And, uh, you know, there's, there's been so much adaptation for both the players and the coaches. And it's each and every day. I mean, we're talking in the middle of practices. We're talking before hey, the protocols change, uh, hey, our schedule changes, hey, you know, and, and, and I can just tell you that, uh, you know, our decisions are made from the health and safety of our guys first. And, you know, and then we'll figure out the other stuff on the back end of it, because uh, we've experienced the pause for, for multiple weeks um, earlier in the year before the game started. And uh, I, I think, Tom, that would be a, an excellent question to ask uh, when, you, when you get to the end of the tunnel. Um, cause right now, um, you know, stuff you learned two weeks ago, you're learning something now this week. And so, um, trying to keep a, uh, you know, bigger picture, but at the same time, um, you know, adapting to that sudden change, embracing it, trying to use it as an opportunity, um, trying to continue to, uh, bring joy and have fun while, while doing something that we love and, um, representing such a great place. So for us, um, I, I'd love to sit down and, and ask my guys that and ask our staff that, but. Right now, we're just so so deep into it, and um, you know we're almost to that ending point of the season that uh, 
we're, we're still trying to make some special moments and, and uh, keep our guys safe. Perfect. We will ask you that at the end of the season. Then, so make sure you have an answer. Absolutely. At that point. Uh, I'm going to give the coaches a little bit of break. As I mentioned, Simon Gray, our director of athletics, is on here with us. Uh, Simon, we've got a few questions kind of come in uh, from different areas. So uh, talk to me a little bit about NCAA rules for athletes using a year of eligibility during this year. Uh, will they be able to play another year, even if they've done the traditional four years? Uh, how does that work at NU? Um, and, and even the recruitment of new players. Yeah, Tom, thanks. I promise I'll answer your question, but there's just a couple of things I wanted to say uh, right before I answer that question. One of them is to thank you for spending some of your family time with us this evening. Also, Jacqueline Rossi and Alyssa Norman from Alumni Relations, really appreciate you putting this together. And I know all of us echo, uh, you know, the fact that you're dedicating a portion of your evening after hours to, to Niagara Athletics. We really appreciate it. There's members of our board of trustees and our board of advisors on the call tonight, as well as other staff members from Niagara. And you know, the one thing I take away from this is we're all uh, in a time of personal uncertainty with ourselves and with our family. And I can say that everybody on this call and well beyond that throughout the campus community has done just a tremendous job of continuing the mission of Niagara University. You'd be really proud for those of you that aren't on campus, but also more specifically to us, has spent a lot of time moving athletics forward. Uh, we had tremendous momentum going into this pandemic. And because of the hard work of Greg Paulus and Jada Pierce and Jason Lammers and other coaches on this call, uh, we've been able to continue that momentum. And the fact that what they're doing during this environment cannot be underscored. Um, you know, that I think they very humbly told you tonight how they've attacked this. Uh, but being with them on a daily basis through this is just really, really impressive. And so I thank from the bottom of my heart, all of our coaches for what they're doing for the betterment of our student athletes and our, for our university. When it comes to eligibility, so the NCAA at this point has granted an extra year of eligibility to our fall sports student athletes and our winter sports student athletes. So that includes the basketballs and the hockey uh, they've not determined yet on the spring sports for this year, but you'll recall last year uh, at the end of the spring when they lost their seasons, all of those student athletes got a year back as well. So all of these student athletes have the ability to play one more year of collegiate athletics. It could be at Niagara University or it could be somewhere else. And so as the year goes along, you know, our coaches are really focused on the season. But as the season winds up, it'll be time to evaluate what the prospectus is for each individual student and where their um, careers are going to take them. I think, you know, we, we saw from the spring and we will continue to see from the fall and the winter, some student athletes are done and they will choose to move on into their career path. Some student athletes will want to come back to Niagara. Uh, they'll work with the coaches on the ability to come back. Um, very grateful to our finance department who has um, taken into consideration the opportunity that's available to our student athletes and to our programs by extending scholarships, right? This is not just an ask of, hey, bring this person back, but this is a request for additional scholarship dollars and additional funding for our programs who are carrying larger rosters. So it, it is a strain a bit on the infrastructure and it's a strain a bit on the resources. So it's a very serious consideration when we consider expanding our rosters and bringing student athletes back or that extra year of eligibility. Finally, some of the student athletes will, will most likely continue to finish out their collegiate career uh, somewhere else. So they would have the opportunity then to play at a different institution as well for that final year of eligibility. So those are the three main options that I see for the student athletes. We've begun the conversations with our coaches. I know, you know they, they have begun to, to think about this and I know the student athletes are thinking about it, but it's a bit premature right now to predict exactly which path our student athletes will take after this year. Okay, I'm gonna put you on the spot for a couple of questions here, although I think you know the dates, but uh, we have a question here. Um, what are the dates of the tournaments, if you know those, or at least when they start? And uh, will there be TV coverage at all for the tournaments? Yeah, so uh, the basketball tournament coaches helped me here, I think is the, the 6th through the 13th is the week uh, that we are in Atlantic City. So. You know, it's interesting. We have to go down. Uh, it used to be in the MAC tournament that you would go as you were ready to play. You know, you'd get there before you play. Not this year, because if you're going to the NCAA tournament, you have to test seven consecutive days before getting to the bubble in Indianapolis. 
So all of the basketball teams have to start testing on Saturday because there's going to be a charter flight out of Atlantic City on Saturday night to Indianapolis and you enter their bubble. So everybody has to start testing on Saturday leading into the tournament. So Saturday, Sunday through your time in the tournament. So everybody will be getting into Atlantic City on Sunday. So that's a bit of a change. The hockey postseason, Jason and I were just talking about this today, as of right now, is scheduled as planned. And it, and it starts, uh, Jason, you'll have to help me on the dates. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know them offhand. Um, but it's really similar. The, the postseason is similar um, right around the same time of um, the basketball. So they, they sort of end at the same time there in the second week in March. So dates, Jason, do you have those? Yeah, so the, uh, the final four of our league will be the 20th and 19th of March. And then you work your way back for two weeks from that. So the, the series before that will be what the 12th and 13th. Yeah. And then okay. the first round will start the fifth and sixth. Perfect. Thanks coach. And uh, Simon, uh, video coverage, TV coverage, web coverage. Oh, sorry. Yep. Right, right. So the, the championship games of the basketball tournament will be on the ESPN platform. And I believe all of the other games, as are all of our regular season games, are on the ESPN platform. So primarily our basketball games are either on ESPN3 or ESPN+. Plus. All the links will be on our website. So purpleeagles.com will be your place to get to find out where the games will be broadcast and how you can get access to them. Hockey is on a different platform there. On, it's on Flow Sports. So that will also be linked up through our, um, through our website. But I believe the entire hockey tournament is on Flow Sports. Perfect. Uh, back to the coaches for uh, a question here that came in, uh, emailed earlier. Um, hey, Tom, sorry. Yep, Can I'm I just, sorry. I'm sorry. I just saw uh, Jessica Kemp just ask. This is really exciting, actually. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. I meant to mention this on the broadcast part. So uh, for the first time, the Mac is going to be streaming internationally beginning next weekend. So um, we will, it's, it's very, it's fledgling and we will work to get that link out in addition to the uh, domestic stateside um, link. But for the first time this weekend, now we're currently off this weekend uh, in both basketball programs, but the, our website provider Sidearm will be streaming Mac games in Canada and internationally. Perfect. Sorry, great. Tom, thanks. Yep. No, that's great. Um, it's nice when the World Wide Web is really the World Wide Web and not just That's the right. U.S. Wide Web. Uh, perfect. Uh, so uh, a question. Now, I, I didn't send this question in, but I have this question all the time as a sports fan in general. Uh, it seems NU coaches can be closed mouth on injuries. Should a coach be expected to inform a fan if a player is injured and the expected time uh, period for a return? You know, I, I always hear upper body. I remember a player had a concussion and they just called it, I think Lindy Ruff and the Sabres called it an upper body injury and everybody knew it was a concussion. But um, so uh, Jada, uh, your thoughts on that? And, and I think there's probably some regulations too with that as, in terms of what you can release. Is that right? There are, yeah. I mean, you get into HIPAA because, you know, it is a medical, you know, whatever it is that they have, it's medical. So you're not allowed to kind of give out that information and then also with the sports betting, maybe not so much for, you know, women's basketball, but with some of the other sports, if people know that a player is out, that might affect, you know, with, with betting and things like that too. So first and foremost, HIPAA. Um, but I would say secondly, there's a lot of betting that goes on and, you know, and stuff like that. So you don't want to, you don't want to leak out any information, you know, at all. It's, it's definitely not legal to do that. <laughs> Great. Coach Lammers, call us, anything to add on that one? Yeah, Tom, I, I would just tell you, I'm like, I'm probably similar to Lindy Ruff from going to Geneseo and watching Lindy Ruff coach. So if I say it's lower body, it's really upper. And if I say <laughs> upper body, it's really lower. Greg, anything to add? No, I, I, uh, I'm a part of the vague uh, answers. And <laughs> um, so, um, you know, I, I think it's um, doesn't, doesn't, uh, it, it lets the healing process, it protects your, your, uh, your team and your players. And uh, in some ways, you know, if, if you don't know someone's playing or not playing, maybe it gives you a little bit of an advantage. Um, you know, hey, is so-and-so going to play? Well, we know they are and the other team can't prepare for. So in some ways, um, you know, you could see that as, as an advantage uh, from that perspective. But uh, we're certainly going to respect TIPA and, and uh, let the process be what it is. Perfect. Uh, a specific question I got for you, Greg, on an email. 
Uh, but I'm going to ask all the coaches about it too, because I think it pertains to everybody. But we'll start with you on this one. Uh, talk about your freshman class, uh, what you saw from your first recru recruiting year, and uh, what does next year's recruiting class look like? So, so how'd you give yourself a, a grade on what you've seen so far this year? I know it's a, a partial because of the the stops and starts and everything else, and, and we're not through the season, but yeah, uh, we're, we're, through that, sure. and, and then what what's next year look like? Yeah, we're excited about, uh, we signed two freshmen that are currently on our roster right now uh, with uh, Taj and Tuba. And, um, you know, we're, we're really excited about them. Uh, unfortunately for them, they have, uh, you know, been injured, um, you know, a good portion of the way here. But uh, from what we've seen beforehand and the type of character and um, who, what, what their strengths are and bringing to our program, we're very excited about it. Um, this, the, the next question, I believe, was, uh, the next year's class. So what's what's uh, next year we, look like? You're in that process now, right? So. Yep, we, we, we signed two freshmen in the fall, uh, or two high school seniors uh, in the fall here, and uh, we're, uh, we'll have a chance to work with them uh, here over the next few months. And, uh, you know, it, it, this was, uh, I know coach um, coaches will agree with this, but this was different because we couldn't see them in person. So we're making evaluations, decisions to, uh, give them an opportunity at Niagara without ever meeting them in person, without ever uh, seeing them live in person. And that's got to be one of the first times in, in history that that's happened. So um, I, I love the character. I love what we see on film. Um, I'm excited to get a chance to work with them and spend more time with them. But, um, you know, that's that it's just different with the pandemic. And we've tried to adjust to that. So um, to summarize, I, I, uh, I think that the character we're bringing into the program uh, is going to make us better. And then uh, Jada, what, it, what same question for you? Um, you know, talk so much about this, you know, how's it going into next year and, and what's it look like? So we have three uh, freshmen on our current roster right now. Um, one of which was getting some significant minutes off the bench for us, Brooklyn Jones. Um, the other two have not played as much. Granted, we've only played four games. But just everybody is coming along and learning the system as a freshman, especially with what we do defensively and offensively. It does take a little bit of time for them to kind of figure some things out. Uh, they've shown some glimpses in practice. I can definitely say that that's for sure. Um, it's just now trusting to put them in game situations. And hopefully, you know, we can, you know, down the line. Um, Brooklyn has played a lot more than, than Lori Porter has, who's a shooter from Virginia. And um, Sage, actually Sage Glover has emerged a little bit in the post, you know, in the front line, just causing alterations with shots and rebounding the ball. And she's really challenging people at practice. So she did gain some of our trust to get in a few of the games that we just played uh, in that Mare series and stuff. So it was really good to kind of see her put some things together. Um, as far as freshmen for next year, we signed uh, two guards, uh, both from upstate New York. Uh, we feel like hidden gems in a sense. Um, and I think for them, we will, they will have an impact. I think we're expecting them to have an impact. And just like, you know, what Greg said, it's hard because we haven't met them in person. We've watched a lot of film. I think the assistant coaches did a great job with, you know, evaluating the talent and, and bringing it to, you know, bringing them to the table and just seeing where they fit in with what we do. Um, so that's been a real, you know, that's been a real bright spot, you know, for us. And we actually brought in a junior college transfer who just started uh, literally a couple of days ago, uh, Ariana Young. So she's she's somebody that it's going to take her a little bit of time probably to insert herself. But, you know, we really like what she brings to the table with her versatility of playing in a forward spot and being able to shoot. Uh, and it always helps that she's a lefty. So that's always nice to add a lefty to your team. Uh, but just she's coming from a great junior college program uh, at ASA down in, in New York City. So, you know, for us, we, you know, we still have a couple more spots to fill. And, um, you know, we're excited about the future. And like, you know, like Greg said, the character is what's important. You know, you want to bring in people of high character that know what the core values are of your program and want to carry those things out. And so far, our freshmen are doing that. You know, they definitely are learning a lot. Their heads are spinning every day. And we do feel with the class that's coming in, although we're not done completely yet, but, uh, you know, we do like what we see, you know, out of them, their feistiness, their passion, you know, they're gym rats. We want people that are gym rats and they do, you know, they definitely are in the gym all the time. Even with COVID, they find a way to get shots up and work on their game, which is really cool to hear from them. 
And, and Coach Lammer, same with you. How's the recruiting class look for next year? Yeah, we're, we're excited about our current freshmen. This is a, a class that we spent a lot of time on uh, in the past. So our, our current freshmen are, are definitely a foundation group for us, especially in my short time here. This, this uh, senior class now is kind of the, the group when I just first got here and was trying to figure out where the bank was and where the grocery store was. So we're, we're really, <laughs> real excited about our freshman class. Uh, this incoming class, we are equally as excited about. We had some time to spend as a staff together, the new staff, and uh, we, we've we added three defensemen. We're adding three forwards, and, and we're going to add a goalie as well. So uh, it, it's going to be kind of a year where we, we move the dial and, and move the team in a new direction, and, and we're excited about that. I've found it's easier just to wire the money directly from the bank to the grocery store too, Jason, just so you know that. I appreciate that yeah, if you uh, can send it to I'll give you the number. There you go. Uh, we do have a, a specific question for you, Jason, uh, from John Osberg. Uh, when you built the theme of uncommon around your team, uh, how did how'd you come up with that? What does it mean? And how does your team embrace that, the, the term uncommon? Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a great question. It, we, we love uncommon. Uh, part of it, I would tell you, is from the Tony Dungy book. Uh, uncommon. He was a Pittsburgh Steeler. I'm from Pittsburgh, right? So I, I, I just am a huge believer in what he does and how he does it. So that was part of it. Uh, another part of it was when my wife and I got married, we were both her parents and my parents are divorced and we were trying to figure out how not to get divorced. And so we turned to faith and uh, we stumbled across a, a verse from Romans 12 and uh, it's Romans 12 2. And it says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. And there's more to it, but I'll leave it at that. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. And so that's where we come up with Uncommon by combining all that. And our guys really embrace it. We, we talk about it a lot. And so what it means to me is you're uncommon as a person, you're uncommon as a student, and you're uncommon as a player. And as a person, we, we've been blessed enough to get a lot of compliments on our guys. We've been tested a lot on campus and uh, they've been talking about how kind our, our guys are, how respectful they are. So that would be an example of being uncommon instead of being an athlete and just walking around and thinking thinking everything's perfect, right? The second part is as a student, we mentioned on the call students, uh, our team GPA is a 3.6. And so every day we're consistently and constantly breaking down the stereotypes of what it means to be an athlete and what it means to be a hockey player. Everybody thinks we're just big, dumb, bums that that uh, just don't know what we're doing and that's just not the case right so we live that uncommon we expect our guys to attend class we expect them to participate in class we expect them to sit in the first three rows uh, we expect them to dress for class brush your teeth comb your hair and you're going to study hall and so that's that's uncommon as a student and then as a player I would sum it up just in uh, the scale piece that we talk about all the time we over me compete with second and third efforts attitude you're either in a, a fountain or a drain you're an elevator button you're either bringing people up or you're taking them down so what's your attitude what are you choosing uh, as a leader first you need to lead yourself and make a good decision right the Ritos in one hand apple in the other we all know the answer but what's your discipline do you choose the apple or do you go to Ritos? and that's uncommon to choose the apple all the time and finally as i mentioned earlier getting better today than yesterday is real important to us and, and uh, our guys are committed to that and we're committed to that as a staff for them to out love everybody else and be the best coach they've ever had or ever will have. Jason, that's great. Uh, we've had a great night. I wanna thank everybody for coming by. A couple a couple more comments on here. Bob Churchwell, who, who has taught an uncommon course for men's ministry uh, two years ago. He's in Bible study, I think with coach there. And Anna McNabb was one of our great professors here. Um, loves having the students in class. So uh, she's she's on here and just wanted to share that with you, um, that, that our players in every sport are developing uh, into leaders and great people on campus. So uh, perfect, uh, a great night to have so many people on here and seeing, seeing all of us come together as fans of the Purple Eagles. Thank you to the coaches, uh, Jada, Jason, and Greg. Thank you to the assistant coaches for being on. Of course, to Jacqueline for this.